<clears throat> I heard the words aquí arriba. Now, I'm not fluent in Spanish by any means, but I knew that aquí meant here, and I knew arriba meant above. So I put two and two together and figured they said up here. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not playing that. We're not playing that. We're not playing that. Well, you meet up here. I ain't going up there. Turn it up. Oh. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Yeah. Turn it up. Okay, food delivery. Now this is interesting. <clears throat> food delivery is another weird one too because you can be called to deliver food in, in a faraway place that's kind of creepy, countryside of town or, you know, dangerous neighborhood. Food delivery is another scary one. You never know where you're going to go exactly, you know, unless you know the neighborhood and then, and, and then you know, you get that call in. But that's, that's another scary one too. So let's see how scary... It'll get. I work as an Uber Eats driver at night to make a little extra cash. Friday and Saturday nights are always the busiest because everyone's either home or with friends and ordering food. So those were usually the nights I would work. I got a request on a Saturday night at 1am to pick up McDonald's for a guy named Kyle. He lived a few minutes away from my current position. So I punched in the nearest McDonald's, which was like a two minute drive away, and picked up his order. First of all, <clears throat> delivered McDonald's is going to be gross, especially when you get fries. When you get fries, and the fries are cold, it's, it's, it's unedible. It was a small order. I think he only wanted two hamburgers. He lived like five to seven minutes away from the McDonald's. I followed the app's directions to the house, and eventually it led me to a short dead end street that veered off another dead end street. The house we gotta stop right now. A dead end street rid off to another dead end street. I quit. I'm not going. I'm not going. We're going back to the shop, bro. We're going back to the shop. I'm not even pulling up to the dead end to see what's down there. As soon as I see a dead end with no lights, you turn immediately. You know what I mean? Immediately, mate. I'm not going there at all was the last one on this dead end road. It sat right next to a line of trees that ran alongside a highway that was pretty much dead at this hour. Definitely not. Given how late of an hour it was, I didn't want to ring the bell, so I called this Kyle guy's number. It rang once, then went to voicemail, Why are you so there? I hung up. Why are you there, bro? Then I got a text from him, though. What the he told me to come to the door, and so I did. I got to the big wooden front porch of the house, and soon the front door opened. A bald guy opened the door, only oh. he didn't look very old. Dang. He looked to be in his 30s, yet his head was completely bald. Dang. Maybe he was sick or just liked that look, oh, so I didn't judge. Mission. However, his breath was disgusting. Woo! His breath? What the... How close were you? Or was it that bad? Dang. His breath was disgusting? Oh, that's terrible, bro. If, if he wasn't that close to him and he could still smell his breath, oh my gosh. What are you doing as a human, man? He seemed to be quite drunk, so that was a little off-putting. The payments were done through the app, so usually there was no need to wait around for money. But this time, this Kyle guy asked me to come put the pizza on his kitchen table while he ran- Hey, yo! You get your pizza, bro! I ain't coming to your house! What you mean? Why are you lazy, bro? This guy lazy than a mugger, man. Why you want me to take your pizza inside your house? You are in your house. Here your pizza. Put it on the side. <clears throat> Man. It's crazy, bro. To fetch a tip. I didn't object to free money, so I waited in his kitchen, which, by the way, was only lit up by a small outlet-sized nightlight, so I it was pretty it. dim in there. It's so much... The whole kitchen smelled... So, so far, dude took... Is delivering a, uh, a order, I think a box of pizza, to a dead end, veered off dead end house. And the dude that's there told him to come in the house and drop the pizza. So let's see what happens. And the descriptions are sounding very terrible. Kyle was taking awfully long down in the basement fetching this tip. So chill, I started to chill, wander chill, a bit. Chill, 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 chill. I stepped into the living room, which was adjacent to the kitchen. The TV was on in there, which was the only reason I could see anything. 
However, the stench was even greater in this room. Ugh. And I noticed that the back door was slid half open. Maybe he was airing out whatever that putrid odor was. Ugh. For the hell of it, I walked to the back door, expecting to get a quick breath of fresh air. But the smell only got worse. Then, finally, I stepped outside onto the man's back deck. I heard flies. The sound of a swarm of flies, right by the door. Ugh. Then, I guess a motion-sensing light saw- Now, at this point, bro, I'm thinking he killed something. At this point, he killed something. I see Benny say- I would never deliver food to this person. And psh, I would never do it myself, bro. <clears throat> but this guy needs the money, so he has motivation to it. I saw my movement and turned on, revealing two big black garbage bags stuffed with two long objects. Ugh. The smell was unbearable, too. Mm. It took me a second to catch on to what I was most likely looking at. Suddenly, waiting around for the tip didn't seem like a good idea anymore. Heck no. Bro. I went back inside and rushed to the front door. And just then, I heard Kyle emerge from the basement calling to me, waving a few singles in his hand. He saw me as I was about to open the door and ask where I was going. I had to come up with something, so I said I was just rushing to check if I had something in my car. He said, oh, okay, as he came over to me and handed me the bills. Then he turned to the back door, to the porch, where the light was still on. Then he looked back at me, with his gummy smile now disappearing. He asked me in a firm voice if I went to his backyard. I told him no, and he just stared at me, not saying anything. I didn't give any fucks anymore. I opened the door and walked myself out, but not without him grabbing my shoulder as I got onto the stoop. Hey, yo! Whoa. Whoa. <clears throat> That's scary. He grabbed his shoulder? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's terrifying, bro. Oh my gosh. I yanked his hand off my shoulder and ran to my car. I saw him run back inside with the front door still open. I turned my car on, but I sat and watched his front door, curious to see if he'd come back out. And he did. What is- This guy sat and what- Oh my- Why? Oh my gosh, bro. This is what I'm talking about. Why would you sit to watch for what- He might- He, he might have a gun in this car. He might have a gun because the confidence of this guy. What makes you think he ain't coming to get you? Let's go, bro. He came back out running full speed for my car with a big metal rod in his hand. I drove away from his house, ready to call the police and report him. I called when I got down the block, making sure to leave him no time to dispose of those potentially dead bodies. I waited down the block and saw police cars pull up literally within two minutes. I watched the whole thing as I told police where to go. In fact, Kyle, if that's his real name, had already started moving the bags, which did contain dead bodies, to the bushes in his backyard. Everything about this guy was off, for leaving the back door open to reveal dead bodies to a pizza delivery boy he may have been deranged, but he also wasn't the smartest man around. Well... <clears throat> I deliver food for an Asian eatery in my town. It's the best gig I could get at my age simply for the tips alone. My friend and I work there together. We're actually the only two who are an Asian. My friend usually works the counter and takes phone calls. Kung Fu. <laughs> I usually do deliveries and Kung that's the way Fu, I that's like funny. it. My friend got off the phone during one night shift we had together and told me I'd you be doing some a delivery. Kung food? After the food was prepared, I was handed a brown paper bag and I was off on my way. The address I was given led me to some small dirt driveway off the main road, onto an enclosed <clears throat> property. Oh my god. Don't picture it as some luxurious private property Heck though. No, it's it was some old, unkempt excuse of a property. This is the wrong turn property. I don't know if you guys ever saw the, the movie Wrong Turn. This is the wrong turn property. It's ugly. It's an ugly building, probably. Old build. It just looked terrible. Property. And the house seemed to be closed off given that there wasn't a single light on in there and how high the grass was. See what I'm saying, bro? I called my friend back at the restaurant and he gave the phone to our boss. Unfortunately, our boss is a stinge, so he yelled at me in his thick Asian accent to knock on the door and don't waste the food. Well, I'll eat it! I got out from my car and felt grass I rubbing against here. my shins. That's how tall it was. That's crazy, bro. I went up the three stairs to the front door and knocked really loud since there didn't seem to be a doorknob. As I expected, after 30 seconds of waiting, there was no answer. So I got back in my car, and first thing I did was start texting my friend back at the restaurant. But when I looked up back to the house, this time one of the upstairs lights inside of the house was turned on. 
So I went back to the door and knocked once again. Only on the first knock, the door pushed open slightly. Someone had opened the door, but there was nobody standing next to the door. I pushed the door open a little more and called out hello. My voice echoed through the empty house. I was waiting to hear footsteps come to the door. They never did. Obviously, someone had to have opened the door, so if they weren't going to come to the door, I had to assume they wanted me to come in. I stepped into the house as my shoes made the wood floor creak. I called out one more time, and this time someone house. replied back. I heard the words, Aki Ariba. Now, I'm not fluent in Spanish by any means, but I knew that a key meant here, and I knew Ariba meant above. So I put two and two together and figured they said up here. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not playing that. We're not playing that. We're not playing that. Well, you meet up here. I ain't going up there. What is going on, bro? <laughs> Come get your food. Man, let's go. Let's go, bro. This is getting stupider and dumber. There was a stairway in the middle of the hallway, so I walked over to it and stopped at the bottom step. I looked up the stairs, and all I saw at the top was an arm reached out over the ledge, doing a little stiff, come here motion. I used what little Spanish skills I'd gained from middle school and said something like, Tango tu comida, as I walked up the stairs. As I got about halfway up the stairs, the arm wasn't there anymore. I got to the top, looking for whoever was just standing by the ledge over the stairs. Then I noticed through the tiniest amount of light that the person was now inside a bedroom with the lights off. Bro, then where I see you going up? Person. Once again, all I saw was the person's arm doing that same come here motion. Bro, what? I did. I don't. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, this is the stupidest thing. What in the heck are you doing there still, bro? You should have left the food at. This is wildy. I can't. This got to be a fake story, bro. This got to be the dumbest person of the fakest movie scene, bro. Because who is doing that, bro? You're in the dark and a hand is telling you to come here? No, nothing in your brain says, this is not a good idea? Oh my gosh. It's as if anything above the person's elbow was faded to black in that room. It was such an eerie sight. I knew for certain I wasn't going in that room, though. So I said firmly with confidence, Buddy, I'm not going in there. You come out here with money or I leave. Suddenly, the arm pulled away into the darkness of the room ahead of me. And after a few seconds of standing there in silence, I was hit by a flying object. It happened so fast that it took me a few moments to realize I'd just been hit with a stiff, severed arm. Oh, it wasn't some plastic Halloween toy. It was a real oh, arm. Oh, Lord! I ran down the stairs with the food still in my hand and got back to my car. Oh. I didn't even call my friend or my boss. I drove straight to the nearest neighboring house and rang that person's doorbell. When they answered, I told them about what their neighbor had just done to me, and the woman had the most puzzled look on her face. She said nobody's lived in that house for a year. I felt my stomach drop when those words hit me. She said she would call the police after we talked about it for a good five minutes. Then I went on my way back to the restaurant with the food. I explained the best I could to my boss, and he let it go. I sometimes wonder how things would have played out if I went into that room and who or what I would have found. Bro, that's crazy. I can't believe he went that far into the house. <laughs> like, who goes up the stairs from somebody going like this or like reaching out? Like, what? Like, I can't even speak English. I used to work at Domino's. They close at 3 a.m. on weekends, and being that I was taking an off year during college at the time of the story, my boss took advantage of that and always threw me on the 9 to 3 a.m. shifts. There would always be at least three people working that late, one to cook the pizzas, one to take orders, and one to do any needed deliveries. This night, the one cooking the pizzas was Jeff, a 28-year-old Italian Jeff, guy who my name is Jeff. jobs. He was always in a bad mood, so when he told me to deliver something, I did it without complaints. So, being a Saturday night, it wasn't uncommon to get calls for deliveries past 2 a.m. Around 2.30, I was told to deliver two pizzas to an address that I still vaguely remember. 27 Crocker Drive, or something close to that. I took my stupid, beat-up 2002 <laughs> Honda Civic up the road for five minutes. The only main road that cuts through our tiny-ass town. I live in the Manchester Township area in Jersey, containing a whole lot of nothing but trees everywhere. 
My drive there was a dark one. After merging off the main road onto smaller roads with no streetlights, the only light that could be seen for miles were my headlights. <clears throat> wow. I turned off the public road onto a dirt road with a private property sign posted outside. It seemed I had arrived to the house I was delivering to, when suddenly I heard a bang reverberating through my car, followed by a weakened sense of handling of my car, as well as a repeating flopping sound. Oh. I knew for certain I just got a flat tire. Oh Lord! I stopped the car at once and got out to confirm the front right tire was completely flat. Hey, listen! I could I'm... see through the headlights that the house was walking distance from my car, though. Oh so... Lordy! Dang! <laughs> this is gonna be a bad. Like all these stories so far, the common theme is they're going to the like like the countryside of town, where there's barely any lights and and the road is. You dirt road or whatever, and, and, and it's dark. You know, it's, it's a common theme. <clears throat> so instead of calling my insurance company, it would make more sense to deliver the pizza and also ask that person for help. I got to oh, the deck boy. of the house. It was an average size house, completely enclosed by trees, oh, as boy. were most of the houses around here. The lights were on inside, but all the blinds were shut. I rang the bell, and quickly a normal looking young man answered the door. Okay, okay, before all right. exchanging the pizzas for money. I told the man about the predicament I just found myself in. Oh, Lord. A look of concern came over his face as he handed me the money and I handed him the pizzas. He came outside to take a look at my car with me. It was a 30 second walk from the house. We got to my car and he started analyzing the tire. He said he could help me, he'd just need his tools from inside. I started questioning what I could have hit on his dirt driveway and he yelled out to me don't worry about it as I was walking down his road. I walked a bit further, kind of ignoring him, when I noticed a spike strip in the road. A very small one, but undoubtedly what I hit. I couldn't see any other reason for that to be there, other than him putting it there deliberately. I started thinking over the possibilities of what could be going down, so I pretended I didn't see the spike strip and walked back saying I didn't find anything. He looked at me. I was worried he might have been suspicious. But then he turned away and said he was going inside to get some tools. God only knows what he meant by tools. I know, bro. Lord. I waited for him to get to his front door before I got back in my car, turned the car on, and threw it in reverse. I was not sticking around there to find out what he was doing. Good, good job. I heard bro. the flat tire wobble on the dirt road as my car slowly rolled in reverse. Good. I made a point of avoiding the spike strip this time. As my car pulled out of the private dirt road onto the concrete road, I took one last look down the man's driveway to make sure he wasn't following me, then I took off. I couldn't drive too fast though and risk of damaging my wheel. I stayed at a steady 10 to 15 miles per hour. Okay, you was getting away though. I looked in my rear view mirror and saw something behind my car. Oh. The man running after my car. Oh Lord. I had no choice but to step on it, forcing me to cringe as I could oh. literally feel the damage being done to my wheel. Lordy. The distance between my car and the man got greater until he was out of sight. After turning back onto the one main road that I'd mentioned earlier, I slowed down the speed a little bit back to 10 to 15. It was a long ride back, about 20 minutes since I had to drive slow. Oh. When I got back, the police would be closing in 10 minutes, but I had to return the domino sign that they make us put on our cars when doing deliveries. Jeff was upset with me that I took so long until I told him the whole story. The woman who was also working the same shift as us listened in with a look of shock on her face the whole time. When time came to close, Jeff told me I should just drive home slow since I live like down the block, and that I should take care of it tomorrow. The two went off to their cars and drove away. I sat in my car for a little bit, thinking. Eventually I turned my car on and started my slow drive back to my house. I noticed, however, that a car without its lights on was following close behind me for a while. So I pulled over in front of some small house to see if they would do the same. The car passed me, but then pulled over on the same side of the street a little further down. Oh shoot. I started to panic, knowing it had to be the man who figured that he'd find me at the Domino's that he ordered from. I couldn't lead him to my house, so even though I didn't know for certain if it was him, I had to be overly paranoid and call the cops. I had police come to my exact location for fear of being followed. After five to ten minutes of waiting, a cop car slowly rolled down the street and I beeped my horn to stop him. He stopped in reverse so that his windows were lined up with mine, and then we both rolled them down. I pointed at the car in front of me with its lights off sitting a little further in front of me. 
But just then, that car zoomed out from its parked position, lights still off, instantly disappearing down the road into the night. Wow. The cop put his lights on and sped after him without saying a word. I didn't know if he wanted me to follow him, but I couldn't with my tire. So I drove home as quick as I could and parked my car in the driveway. I still don't know if that cop caught that driver. Somehow I doubt it, but I like to imagine he did. Either way, I always made sure to watch my back every time I drove home after that night. And I quit that job two months later. <laughs> Yo. Yo, that is crazy, guys. <clears throat> I'm telling you, man, that's scary. Like, to, to not only know that you could have almost got got but to see the guy running after you while you driving that is scary you like that is scary i i feel for these delivery people man that's why like i mean i don't want to say i always do this so don't get it twisted but i try to tip them i try to tip delivery people i try but i'm not gonna lie when i'm hungry and I got to pinch the penny. I'm sorry. Ain't no tip for you, bro. Ain't no tip. But but usually, you know, if I order something, I know I have extra to tip. So that's what I try to do. Because I know it's, you know, it's hard work and stuff like that. And, you know. But I feel for, for people that deliver, that deliver and that have to deliver because of their situation, they got to build, get to a certain space. And this is how they could do it. You know, getting getting to places like this where you can almost lose your life is scary. And I know it'll make you want to uh, definitely quit your job. And as you probably should, man, because it's weird people out here just just looking to get somebody. And, and they're smarter. They're getting smarter and smarter these days. So they, hey, let me get a delivery guy. Let me get a guy that's doing the Uber. You know, let me, you know, they're going to find some way to get you. So I'm glad. <clears throat> that uh that person did not wait or go inside the house because that person would have got got immediately 